How's it going guys? This evening, a customer brought by this Polaris Ranger crew. It's a six-seater uh, UTV. Put a new battery in it. Uh, the complaint is it does not start. Turn the key, nothing happens. So I suspect either fuse, relay, um, starter, starter solenoid. It's wrong with start. I'm going to start the battery. See where we have voltage and where we lose it. So this one actually has a little hood latch, just like a, a pickup truck. Um, pretty rough condition overall. Just kind of definitely been used, which is kind of nice to see because some people don't even use these things how they're supposed to be used. So um, as of what I see so far, I see a bad relay sitting here. Definitely been sitting in the weather. I have a whole bunch of seeds. This thing's been blowing through some some fields somewhere. New battery from December of this year. Um, connections are very loose. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to have my multimeter over there. I'm going to check voltage. There's some keys in it. Yeah, you don't even have power when the key's on. So... <laughs> I think we might just have a battery issue. Uh, yeah, we'll get this uh, looked at here and I'll let you know. Definitely a lot of mirrors going on. Pretty cool though. Got a radio system in it. Beefy little top to it. Pretty nice little machine. But yeah, we gotta figure out why we have no voltage. So, for starters, it has two volts. So, I'm going to grab my little jump pack out of the car. Yeah, we'll go from there. Okay, I'm just using my small uh, thousand amp jump starter. I don't have any reason to throw 4,000 amps at it. Because I'm just trying to see if we can get some power at the gauge itself. Okay, got power there. Got some fuel. Maintenance lights flashing. When we were pushing it, I could tell it was locked into four wheel drive. It's very hard to push. Let's just push the brake, see what happens. So you're getting nothing. Could be something as simple as a uh, safety switch, too. But since we have power, um, I'm going to go ahead and hook the battery charger up to it. And then we'll try cranking it with a meter on it, see if we're getting power at the starter itself. Okay, I've only been at this maybe 10 minutes. Just enough, I um, saw where the starter was, followed the wire back. Um, I'm hooked onto the starter solenoid. Uh, this side here is the output side. That there's the input, I have 13.9 right now. When I turn the key, nothing. So, what I'm going to do is hook up two wires to the each side of the solenoid and jump them. Touch them together, see if it cranks over. I mean, ideally, that's all you have. Check the fuses. All the fuses are good. So if I do this and it cranks over, then it's a solenoid. So I'm just going to turn it on, and then I'll touch it right here. Um, I'm going to try to sit in the driver's seat just in case something funny happens, but... Yeah, let's give it a shot. Okay, I turned the ignition on, foot on the brake. Um, I have two wires in my hand, you can't see them. It is cranking over. These, it's very, very low gauge wires in my hand, so um, I'll let it cool off for a minute and I'll try it again. We'll see if we can get it to crank. Uh, I didn't even look, I think this is fuel injected. So as long as we have enough voltage, we should crank it over. Um, what the hell it is, is a solenoid. So, that's awesome. I'll uh, get on Amazon, see if I can order one, see how quick I can get one. And then they should be good to go. Um, they didn't ask for a single thing except for getting this to start. So, I'll do a quick uh, once over and see. Yeah. I just don't have enough voltage right now. This battery is shot. Um, if I hooked up the jumper pack, it should crank right over. 
Ideally, if I had another person, I'd just jump with a screwdriver, but it's just me and I don't want anything funny to happen, so we're playing it safe right now. Good morning, guys. It's the next day. I'm coming in here to check the voltage on the battery. Don't know if it fully charged or not. According to the gauge, um, that's not looking good. <laughs> so I don't think this thing's even holding a charge at all. So what we'll do is turn this off. We'll get our meter here and test our voltage. I'm guessing it only has like five volts at the highest. No, well, this is 13. The thing is to see how fast it drops. Five. It should settle around 12.6 if it's good. So, um, I'll let it sit with it off right now. Um, I have the solenoid showing up today, and then there is not a single drop of oil on the dipstick. So, I'm doing an oil change on it. So, I have that showing up at the same time. Hopefully it's earlier this morning instead of later. I did find out this is uh, 2010. Um, yeah. As of right now, I'm going to run to Heritage Tractor for a part for a John Deere D170 that needs a um, bracket that broke for the raise and lower. The little support bracket snapped. And then replacing a belt on that. That's at the customer's house. And then I'm running by Harbor Freight. Get a tube for the power washer. Because that's done. Just need a fuel line. And then I'm taking in this half inch torque wrench that's completely busted. See if I can warranty that out. So yeah. I'm going to go to Heritage Tractor first. And then go to Harbor Freight. I think that's all I need. I might need a battery for this, but I'll let it sit while I run errands and kind of see what happens with that. So, yeah. Off my adventure I go. I think I might take the, uh, the Ultima, see how it does today. I need to figure out, it has a really bad shake. I think it's just uh, the rotors that are warped. You can also hear the tire kind of squeaking. The front uh, driver's side tire, you can hear like when you're on kind of like asphalt, you can hear it kind of chirping a little bit. I haven't looked to see if it has any uneven wear or anything. Like nothing that's stuck out majorly to me, but I mean, the tread seems pretty even as far as wear from the inside to the outside. It could also be these wonderful hubcaps making noise too. I don't know. We'll just have to drive it and see what it does. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get the keys for this and get out on the highway and head all the way up to Smithville and see how it handles. I need to get new wipers for this thing too, but one thing at a time. All right, let's play the game. Will it start? Yep. One, six, four, one. Dang, I guess I need fuel. That sucks. 50 miles till empty. Overall though, this car has not been too shabby. Especially since I've fixed the, the major leaks. Let me see if I can show you when I'm gonna start shaking hard on this road but definitely need struts you hear it clunking away but not too bad as far as in town I've been getting 26 miles to the gallon that's about nine miles more per gallon than the Grand Marquis I can't tell 
Dallas Road's too bumpy. Surprisingly, it's actually not really doing it right now. I mean, the string wheel's not moving at all. Typically, it sits there and kind of bounces back and forth. But I'm not getting much out of it. When I get on the highway, it might do something. Typically, it does it around 35, 40, but not doing it this morning. I don't know. Which makes me think it's some kind of uh, a wheel bearing or something, too. Well, I made it here to uh, Harbor Freight to swap out the uh, torque wrench and uh, park somewhat close to a supper truck. First one I've ever seen. It's pretty nice. Uh, definitely a lot longer than I thought they would be, but you know, is what it is. Not really a big fan of them, though. Alright, I got the power washer finished up and getting ready to have the total eclipse go on, I guess. I looked through my uh, fancy glasses here. It's about 50%. These are mine from 2017 with the broken end on them. <laughs> so we'll see how much we get here. I think we're only supposed to get like 89% Kansas City. So we'll see. Working on this push mower right now. Wish I could just do this full time. <laughs> okay, you guys want to see what it looks like? Let me put my eyeglasses on. That's what it looks like right now. Okay, we're getting a little bit closer. Let's see what it looks like now. It's hard to sell on the phone. <laughs> Let's see here. This is how I look, you know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what time it's supposed to do it. I think it's like 50, like 20 minutes or something. I guess we'll see. Okay, I think we're at our time. Can't really tell. It's like not as bright out here. But, I mean, the sun... The moon keeps moving, but that's it keeps going uh, east and west, so I don't think we're going to get much more than that. I'm not sure. Looks like 89%. Alright guys, finally got it going. Did an oil change on it and everything. Um, several bad grounds. Um, have everything working except for the, the front light, or pretty much all three of the front Chinese light bars. Um, if you have a 2010 Polaris, this is a Ranger Crew 800 EFI. Uh, if you have a no start on this, no matter what you do, pretty much everything lights up like normal. You just turn the key, nothing happens. Um, I did the starting solenoid. Come to find out something super, super simple. Check on the driver's side, front of the rear tire, this. This is where your starting solenoid gets its ground. And if this is off, like this one was, it was just hanging here, you will not be able to start it. So make sure that has a good connection and should be good to go. So, all right, well, I think I'm done with this. I'm gonna call the customer, tell them it's ready to go for now. I know they probably wanna use it this summer, so I'm gonna let them know if they want it serviced in the winter, let me know. Um, the oil was, I've never even seen oil that black. It literally looked like diesel oil coming out. And there was only half a quart that came out. I did let them know that as soon as I found it out, before I even started the thing. So, pretty much uh, as a wrap on this project. Thanks for watching. See you guys next video.